In this presentation, we will enter a transaction related to the receipt of a government grant into our not-for-profit organization. Get ready, because here we go with Applos. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to head on over to our uh, Excel file to see what our objective will be. We're going to be in tab four. So we're in tab four where we have a contribution that's going to be for, let's go over to our description up top. So this is going to be the government grant to be used for education. So we're going to get money. We got money from a government grant and we have to use it for a specific reason. They put a restriction on it in other way, in other words, that being for education, one of our uh, sources or one of our programs. So we're going to say then cash is going to be going up. The other side's going to be going to a type of income account, which is the contributions, but it will have a restriction for it. So we have the contributions restricted. And then if we go to the right, we're going to say that uh, the cash will be going up in terms of the balance sheet account. The other side being income, income going up. However, it will be restricted. The two incomes being reflected here as restricted and unrestricted by two separate accounts. We can then see the statement of activities where we could pull that over, break that out, not by two separate accounts. This is basically the income statement, but instead by two columns. So we have our contributions. We have with restrictions and without restrictions. We're going to be using the funds feature within Applos in order to do that. All right, let's go back on over to Applos and see what we have. So we're in our system now. We can enter this into our donations here. So we can enter it into our donations. We're going to have another contribution, a contribution happening, but we can't use the same purpose because the normal donation is going to go into a separate account. So we need to set up another purpose, which is kind of like uh, kind of like an item or service item or inventory item for a for-profit organization. And then we're going to go to the plus button. So we'll hit the plus button. We're going to add the other purpose and I'm just going to call it gov grant uh, restrict. Well, let's just call it gov grant. And so we have that and it's going to be a restricted gov grant. And then I'm going to say it's going to be then the income account will be restricted. That's going to be the fun, the account it's going to go to. The fund, the columns, the two column income statement is going to be in the restricted fund. And then we're going to give a further tag of the type of restriction. Now we haven't added the further tag of type of restriction. So we need to add because all we have now is a time restriction. So let's go back up top. I'm going to right click on this tab up top. And I'm going to duplicate this tab so I can go ahead and work on it without having to remove myself from the screen which is, again, great feature for these kind of online uh, softwares, allowing you to move around in multiple tabs. Then we're going to go then to the accounting. Let's go to the fund accounting. We want to then go to the accounting dropdown. So we got fund accounting, accounting dropdown, and then we're going to take a look at those tags. So we want to go into those tags once again. We're going to be adding another tag. So here's our tags. We have the unrestricted and the restricted. We're going to go into the restricted tags where we only have one tag thus far. We're going to add another tag. So I'm going to say plus. I'll make it a good old 500 for the tag or let's make it 600 on the tag and the tag name. We're going to say Gov Grant Education. Gov Grant Education. Uh, and it's not going to be a sub tag. Notice we can use the sub tags. It's nice to, to understand if we wanted to group it in a, basically a subcategory. But in any case, we will then say add. And so there we have our second tab. All right, that looks good. Now let's go back to our first tab up top, back to the first tab and see if we can populate that here in the restricted item now. That's where it should pop up 600. See if it populates, it does. So it populates for us. Notice if you're getting close to the bottom of the screen, you can hold down control and scroll down if you're on a Windows computer. Uh, and then, and so now we have our education grant, so you can see a little bit more uh, down here. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to save this. Then we can go back into our contributions. So I'm going to go back into contributions. I'm going to go into our contributions uh, drop down. So I'm in don't I'm in uh, donations now. We're in contributions drop down contributions. And then we're going to add a contribution. So let's add another contribution. And the contribution is going to be from uh, the government. And I'm going to call it Gov1 just for a generic 
name of the government. Now you might want to add detail to break out like state and, and fed government contributions um, as well, just to, just to note, and you might do that by, by separate accounts for the state and uh, the fed. But in any case, I'm going to say then it's going to be government grant. So that's going to be our item. That's going to be the thing that's going to help this be driven to the correct account. Uh, as we saw before, so we just saw the accounts that we set up for it. I'm going to say acknowledge or unacknowledged, so we haven't sent you know a thank you letter for it or whatever at this point. And then we're going to go back to January and say this is going to be for January 4th. The amount then, let's go ahead and check that out in Excel and see what the amount is. I'm going to go back to the left. I'm going to scroll up to the top. That's 159-159-000. So we'll make the amount then 159000. Reference, nothing. I'm not going to put a note on it. Probably should, but I won't. No expenses related to it. Non-deductible. Not putting anything there. Nothing there. So I'll keep it as is then. So when I record this, it's, it's going to be recording and, uh, well, let's record it first and then we'll record the deposit. So I'm going to say save and close. Note that in and of itself doesn't uh, doesn't enter into the system at this point until we, we record the deposit. So now we can go in and record the deposit. Note also that when we did this, we ran this through uh, basically the donations. So that means that this is going to be showing up if we run basically our uh, our contributions report. If, if we didn't want that to be the case and we didn't want to run it through our, our standard donations, we could enter it in some other way in our in just in our accounting with like a journal entry or something like that rather than going through uh, the donation process. So just you know be aware of that. But we're gonna be now we're gonna deposit it in the same fashion as we've done before. So we're gonna then go to the little checkbox here. We're gonna create a deposit. We will then create the deposit. And once again, this will repopulate up top. So this is another way we could have entered this a little bit, you know, faster straight into the deposit screen. And so we have the 159 and everything looks good except the date. So let me change the date, bringing this bond back to, what did we say, the fourth? I think we did. I think that's what we said. That's what I'm going with. That looks good. Let's go ahead and save it. Let's check that off and save that out. All right, so then we have our deposit. Let's go back to our second tab that's currently open. Let's open up our reports with it now. By going to the reports on the right-hand side, we're gonna be opening up our favorite two reports. Not really the balance sheet or income statement, but the balance sheet by fund and the income statement uh, by fund because yes, they're more fun uh, to open. And then we're gonna go back to the tab on the left we're going to open the other one up, so I'm going to, I'm going to go to the, the reports. We're going to be then opening up uh, the income statement. Now, I also have them in our favorite items up top because I put a little yellow star by them. If you don't have them up here, you can find them down below and then put the little star next to them if you haven't done so so far, which you really should have if you've been watching you know, what we've been doing because this, these are important. These are important reports. So then we're going to go back up top. I'm going to duplicate this tab, right-clicking on this tab, duplicate that tab. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the right, and we will then update uh, this one. Let's make it the little drop-down, and then make this back to January, January 31st, January 31st. So uh, there we have that. Checking account then uh, should be increasing. So we have the checking account increased. And notice it's in uh, the restricted item here. So checking account increased on the restricted side. Note again, the balance sheet, you have this option here of having the balance sheet be broken out between the restricted and unrestricted. That's, that's a little bit different than you would typically have in, in something like if you were doing this in a, in a uh, QuickBooks, which really breaks out the balance sheet by the, by the kind of like the funds. You can use classes to, to break them out, but doesn't usually have that same uh, capability up here on the on the uh, I'm sorry it breaks it on the income statement but not so on the balance sheet typically also note you might want a total column on this report and you can do so by going up top and saying I want to, uh, would you give me the total column please total column I'd like to total this thing up so then we've got our breakout between the restricted unrestricted and then our uh, our total cash so it's kind of nice that we can then uh, uh, be looking at our cash account and be able to kind of, you know, get an, get an idea of the breakout between the restricted and unrestricted items here. Okay, so then let's go back on over to the income statement up top. We'll go to the income statement. 
drop down. Let's take a look at uh, this year to date, the year to the current date. So as long as it's including January, that should work for you as well. So then we have the restricted item up top. Here's the restricted item, that uh, 267. If we were to click on that 267, we can drill down onto that information. Here's the uh, deposit that we have, uh, the contribution deposit. If we were to drill down on that, we would get to the source documentation. So let's go on back as, we, as we've seen in the past. So I won't do that again. Then I'm going to go back to the first tab. Let's go back to the first tab again. Let's go to another report. Let's go to our reports drop down and say let's check out another report because reports are fun to check out especially the fund reports those are really fun so then we're going to go down to the reports by tag so the reports by tag and i want to see the income statement so we're going to check out the income statement that is restricted so restricted tag income statement all right that's the one we want We'll open that one up. I'm going to say the date is going to be the year to date. Uh, this uh, this year to date. That's what we need. And there we have it. So now we've got the two restricted items, two restrictions. So you're imagining what's what's happening now. We're going to say, all right, if we're presenting this information to somebody else, somebody presenting it, we could say, here's basically your balance sheet. Uh, and, and maybe you want to break out the balance sheet like this or maybe you want to give just a normal balance sheet because this could overwhelm people but it's nice to have the balance sheet like this to give an idea of basically the assets and whatnot uh, in, uh, by, by fund although typically you, you're kind of showing that in the equity section down here which is the net assets saying hey here's the breakout between restricted and unrestricted in terms of net assets, assets minus liabilities but in any case uh, you have that, or you might just want to give them, you know, the one balance sheet and show it by fund down here, which might be easier to see. Because again, your goal is to give this to someone and not overwhelm them at first, because it can be a lot of information once you start breaking this down by the funds and whatnot. Then, of course, you go to the income statement and say, okay, the income statement by by um, by fund here. So here's the income statement by fund. Once again, we probably want the total column as well, so you can, you can say, hey, I'd like to drop down here. Would you give me the total column too? Total column, apply that out. And so again, this can look a little overwhelming compared to a normal income statement because you got three columns. You got the restricted, unrestricted, uh, and then of course the total column. And then you could say, okay, well here they're gonna. The question then that we're expecting, we're kind of hoping for, is more questions about it. Well, what are the restricted items? What are the unrestricted items? And and then we're gonna go. All right. So here's the restricted items. It's going to add up to a total of the 267,000. That'll be done by this report, giving us that uh, 267,000. And our two restricted items are time and the government grant education, which add up to that 267. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.